All right, ladies. Well, thank you. I'm honored to share with you guys the knowledge that I have with For Sale by Owners. It's a pleasure. My name is Trisha Costa. If we haven't met yet, here's my phone number. If you guys ever have questions about FISBOs, just text is the best way to get a hold of me is texting. So just send me a text message. I'm really good at responding throughout the day. And I got to tell you guys, I'm obsessed with FISBOs because it made me in the industry. I've been a realtor for over 20 years. And that's how I made my, my money. That's how I became successful. That's how I built a team. And I was able to give listings to all the ladies on my team back then because I had more listings than I could handle. And I had to stop calling because I had so many listings. And I think what really helped me was my approach being completely different than everybody else. So I'm going to share with you guys here, uh, you know, what I have done with FISBOs throughout the years. So one of the things that is so important is that FISBOs, they love us. People have the impression that, oh, I don't wanna call FISBOs, they don't like agents, they had bad experiences. And then you look at the numbers and you're like, oh, that's not true. They're basically raising their hand and saying, hey, I'm trying to sell my house, I am struggling and I need some help. Can you please reach out to me with the right attitude? And you can see here, yeah, they want to save money. Everybody wants to save money. They, they think they're going to save time if they do it on their own. They're confident that they can sell. We know they can't. Less than half are actually going to be able to sell it. And the ones that do, they sell it because they already had a friend or a family member that is buying from them, in which case they make very, very little money. And they already know a potential buyer. So that's basically what I was talking about. And they feel like they are going to do a better job than us because they know the house better than we do. They know the neighborhood. So they, it's just a lot of misconceptions, but they actually do like agents. Very small percentage, as you can see, actually had a negative experience with an agent. So I think a lot of people are afraid of FISBOs because they think if they call, they're going to you know, yell. Yeah. And some people do, but it's a very, very small percentage. Most people I, I have ever called, they're actually very nice and they end up having a conversation with me and I find commonality and it works great. So let's look at the statistics because I think that's super important to understand. So they account for only 5% of the homes that sold last year. They can't sell it. They just can't sell homes because more than 10% were listed with FISBOs. I don't even think I have that on here, but more than 10%. So less than half actually sell it. And the fact that 10% listed, that's a lot of the market. You know, if you can reach out to 10% of the market and get some of those listings, it's a lot of business. And this information is super important to know because as you're talking to them in a very gentle manner, as, as you build a relationship, you can share information with them like this. The typical FISBO so, sold for 310000 compared to four hundred five. So if they are trying to save money, there is no savings in not having an agent. If you have an agent, you're going to make way more money, even if you're paying a commission, because $400,000, you are looking, even if at a full 3% commission, it would be only $12,000. And they're selling for almost $100,000 less, especially when they sell it to a friend or a fam family member, then it's very, very um, damaging to their pocket when they don't use an agent. So here are the ways that they sell, you know, again, the majority, they already know who they're selling it to. It's a friend, relative, it's a, a, a neighbor, yard sign, third party. They, they have so many websites nowadays for, for sale by owners, the for sale by owner.com. They do open houses. They do, some of them are running ads on like Craigslist and, and those websites. And of course, we have given away the MLS with Zillow and Realtor.com, so they use those as well. The most difficult tasks when they were asked, you know, what are the problems? These are important for us to know too. Um, and the reason why it's so important for us to know is because if we know that they're having difficulties, 
now we know how to help them. We know what we can share with them when we're having conversations and telling them, hey, let me just make sure everybody's muted here. Hang on so I don't get distracted. Um, so you can see they have a difficult time preparing the home for sale. They don't know what to do. They're like, well, what do I do? How, you know, Do I have to stage the property? Do I take pictures down? So they get confused with that. They don't know how to price it correctly because they don't know how to run comps like we do. So when we're talking to them and building a relationship, you know, we're talking about some of these things, giving them tips, um, understanding the paperwork. I mean, that's a nightmare. Most for sale by owners, when I talk to them, they don't even know that they should be calling a title company because they have contracts available to sell without an agent. So I give them lots of help and information before I'm listing the home. And I'll talk about that later, but it's all about the law of reciprocity and providing value. Um, selling within the planned uh, length of time, they have no idea what the average days on the market is. They don't understand anything. So having enough time to devote to selling the home. You know, I remember when I got my puppy and people were like, oh, you can train your puppy. I'm like, yeah, I could but I'm not a dog trainer. I have a life. You know, my dog trainer, that's all he did 24 seven was train dogs. That's how it is with real estate. They don't have time. They have full-time jobs. They can't really devote any time to selling the home. And they have even a, even a harder time attracting, you know, real potential buyers that are qualified and having the understanding of, you know, how do you help this buyer with financing? So these are the things that Fizbo's said, hey, we struggle with these things. So my approach has been all about providing value. So making the law of reciprocity work for me. And instead of trying to have commission breath, because it doesn't work, especially with Fizbo's, I think a lot of the agents, they call and they want to take the listing over the phone. They are aggressive. They want to tell them, you're an idiot. You know, more than half of you are never going to sell your home. I'm the best agent in town. And instead, I'm trying to find commonality. I'm trying to give them lots of value and having a mindset of contribution. So we have to be different than all the other agents to do well in with Fizbo's. And it's so easy to do well with Fizbo's. I, you guys, I know a lot of people don't like to make cold calls which makes it even better because the majority of people, especially nowadays, if I was starting now, I would be obsessed with Fizbo's because everyone is focused on, you know, social media and videos, which is awesome. But Fizbo's are kind of like left to the side and they are still trying to sell and raising their hands and saying, hey, can you please call me and list my house? More and more, I see people walking away from Fizbo's. You know, there's less and less people calling Fizbo's and they are the best. And if you have the right attitude, the right plan, the right scripts, you can do really well with this. So instead of being aggressive and trying to take a listing over the phone, just be agreeable and focus on making an appointment to meet them in person because that face-to-face -face changes everything. When you see them face to face and you can build a friendship with them quickly, you know, build some rapport, commonality and be relatable. I mean, it's, they want to list with you. You have to allow them to get through the pain of trying to sell because we know they're not going to be able to. The chances of them selling are not very good, especially now nowadays. So let them go through the pain and you build a relationship during that time because then when they realize they can't do it, they come to you. So you're basically basically their agent. You're giving all the value up front because they don't think they need you. But then when they realize that they really do, then they reach out to you. And pretty much every FISBO I've taken, they reach out to me. They go, hey, you know what? I think we're ready to list with an agent and we really appreciate all you have done for us over the past 45 days. You're so awesome. We want to list with you. So what we're going to focus on, focus on building a relationship. When you get to the house, you arrive at the FISBO, you're not going to do a full on, you know, presentation, try to convince them why they should list with you because that's what everyone is doing. And they're like, wow, these people are like used car salesmen. Like I, I'm, we're going to just do it on our own. Right. But then you build a relationship, you show up and you're like, Oh, are these your children? No, because you're lucky. Hang on, guys. Let me mute here. So you're going to arrive at the FISBO and you're basically going to say, hey, who are these kids? Are these your grandchildren? Are these your kids? Where are you moving to? And you just find commonality. I remember I, I listed a house one time and I never, ever talked to this guy about real estate. 
But when I got to his house, I saw these pictures of Rocky Point and I have an Airbnb business down in Rocky Point. And I was like, oh my gosh, you guys love Rocky Point. I've been going to Rocky Point for 20 years. I was at his house for 45 minutes talking about Rocky Point. And at the end of the 45 minutes, he goes, you know what? We want to list with you. Because people list with who? People they know, like, and trust. They don't know, like, and trust you when you call them. But most agents try to list a house when they call. They're like trying to convince that FISBO why they're so good and why they should list with them. And they're thinking, click, but you go over there and now you have things in common. Oh, your daughter goes to this particular school. So does my niece. I listed another one that way. I'm like, do you know Christy Owen? She's my sister. Oh my gosh, I listed the house. So get to know people, build a relationship, find commonality, ask questions. Things about the house, like, is there anything about this house that only you would know that would not be listed on Zillow? Where are you moving to? When do you need to be there? How quickly do you need to be there? And then you can move into more things like, so if you can't sell it by June 5th, because you said by June 5th, you need to be in Orlando, Florida. If you don't sell it by this date, do you have other plans outside of FISBO? Are you going to interview agents? that kind of conversation. Okay. So here's the flow that I use. I call the new FISBO as soon as it hits the market. Okay. I have much higher chances of listing a house if I am the very first person they talk to. So keep an eye and I'll, I'll show you guys, you know, there's different dialers that you can use. Uh, you can go to Zillow, which is free and use Zillow. I'm always trying to find free ways of getting things done. So as soon as you, every day you check, as soon as you see one that hit the market, you're going to call that FISBO. You're going to schedule a face-to-face -face appointment within 24 to 48 hours from the call. And I'm going to show you guys some of the scripts that I use to schedule these, these appointments. You're going to call the FISBO to confirm the appointment right before you leave your office, okay? So I never head over to the FISBO because I've made that mistake. And then I get there and there's nobody there or they're like, oh, I'm so sorry. This is not a good time. So right before I leave, I call them again. I say, hey, just want to confirm the appointment. You know, if I know it's going to take me uh, 20 minutes to get there, I call maybe 35 minutes ahead of time in case they don't pick up. I can call again a couple more times before I leave. So always confirm the appointment. As soon as I leave my appointment, I already have, I actually have them right here, but I have cards and they are ready to go. Okay. I just put in the envelope. I, they were pretty much already written. I just leave a few things blank because I, I want to be authentic. So if it's a really ugly house, I'm not going to say, oh, thanks for showing me your beautiful home. So I try to make it very authentic and real, uh, but I have the cards ready to go. So as soon as I leave the house, I already have the stamp on the card. I just have write down the address and I drop it at the post office. So I always send a card saying, hey, it was great meeting you today. I try to make it personal. You know, I really enjoyed seeing the pictures of your family and getting to know you and your wife. Thanks for showing me your beautiful home. I'm confident that you're going to be able to sell it all on your own. And if you have any questions, I'm always here to help you, you know, anything related to real estate. Take care, Trisha. I don't put a business card inside because I don't want to be salesy. It's a true heartfelt thank you card that I'm sending to them. And, um, I don't really, because I know I'm going to follow up later. So I, you know, I don't need them to even have my information and I want to make it feel very personal and not like a sales pitch. So I, I will do that later, but I need to have that connection with them. So the following Monday, so I have a schedule for FISBOs. Mondays is give the FISBO a call day. Okay. So Mondays are the call days. I'm calling all the FISBO saying, Hey, um, it was great, you know, meeting you last week. And they're like, oh, thanks for the card. I got your card in the mail. And I just wanted to check in with you, see how things are going. You know, have you had any showings? What kind of interest are you getting? Do you have any questions? Anything I can help you so that you can sell it on your own? I'm just helping them to sell the, the house on their own. Then Wednesdays, I send a letter sharing, uh, sharing tips on how to sell the home. I'll show you an example of a letter that I send out. 
Um, and then Fridays, I send the text message, same thing. Hey, how how did how did it go this week? Good luck this weekend. You know, maybe you'll get some showings this weekend. So I just stay in touch with them. It's like a new friend, right? I'm just checking to see how they're doing on this journey of selling the house on their own. And Monday, I follow up again. So my second Monday follow up, I'm going to offer to do an open house. I'm like, hey, you know what? I see that you're struggling. You know, you haven't had any showings. I truly want to help you sell the house on your own. Are you open to doing an open house? It's not going to cost you anything. 100% free. I will do everything. You just need to be out of the house for three hours. That way I can use a FISBO that I haven't even listed yet as an open house to pick up buyers. And that's a house that's not even on the market. So when people come in, I have that edge as well, where I'm saying, yes, I do You know, a lot of open houses on houses that are not even listed yet. So I have a lot of, uh, of these homes that I would be able to share with you. What's your phone number where I can send you, you know, a couple of homes that I have in mind right now that we, I could show you that we could take a look at. And then I become the Zillow expert because now I have all these other Zillows that I am communicating with that I can show buyers as well, right? I can be like, because I already negotiated with the FISBO that if I bring a fully qualified buyer, he's going to pay me 3%, okay? So that's how I do my flow. So this is one of the letters and it says West USA Realty guys, because I was with West USA for many, 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 many years. I was a coach and mentor with them and I'm new uh, to Bliss Realty as a coach and mentor as well. Uh, but this is the letter that I've sent, you know, for many, many years. So as you can see on the right, it's just a testimonial. So I just went to Zillow and I copy and pasted a testimonial from Zillow from one of my happy clients. And thankfully, I only have five star reviews on Zillow. So, you know, I would put like two or three in an envelope and then send it to them and say, hey, just want to show you that. And what I do, guys, is I use a sticky notes. OK, so I put a sticky note. I have like. I just put a sticky note on it. I would fold that, put a sticky note on the top and just say, hey. Uh, you know, just want to say hello and share with you some of the testimonials. You know, I only have five star reviews. All my clients are always happy with me. If you ever get to the point where you're ready to interview agents, I would love a chance to, to be one of them. OK, and here's five tips on selling your home quickly. You can pull that up online, guys. Uh, when I created these, I had to do it on my own. But nowadays you can just go on Google and say five tips to sell my house by owner. And, you know, you will just create little value items like this because you're building a relationship and now they really love you because you're not trying to push them to list. You're not being aggressive, you know, making them feel like they're idiots for trying to sell on their own. And you're offering value. You're putting the law of reciprocity to work for you. So um, these are awesome. So let's talk about a little bit of the scripts here, what to say, how to say it. So you call the day that the house gets listed and I never say, you know, hey, I've taken a lot of classes. I paid for a lot of courses online and I kind of mix and matched all the things that I learned throughout the years. And one, one of the things that I've learned is every agent says, hey, this is Trisha Costa and I'm with Bliss Realty and Investments. And then it just sounds very realty. And we don't want to. We want to sound more like a laid back friend that just wants to, you know, take a look at the house, like not trying to list the house. So I just say, hey, good afternoon. Good morning. This is Trisha. I'm a local realtor. How are you doing today? Oh, I'm doing great. Thanks. Hey, I just wanted to touch base with you, your house uh, on. Just read the address, you know, and I don't say the whole address, you know, hey, your house on Sparrow Drive. Uh, do you, did you end up selling it? What is, is it still available? OK, so you're just trying to see if the house is still available because sometimes it is sold and it's still showing that it's listed on Zillow. There's a lot of that that happens. So um, I see that you're selling it for sale by owner, correct? Are you open to working with agents that bring you a fully qualified buyer? So that's the big question, because if they are not even willing to pay three percent or even two and a half percent, if you bring them a buyer, Ooh, that's going to be a really tough one to convince to list. Okay. So my idea is always to first let's secure the buyer's agent, that side of things. And then we can negotiate the other side. It becomes a lot easier than trying to, you know, talk to somebody about a 6% commission or 5%. 
or four and a half or whatever it may be. So it's easier to just ask, hey, on the buying side, if I bring you a fully qualified buyer, are you willing to pay a commission? And then I ask some more questions. Are you still uh, are you still living in the home? I'm having a hard time talking today, guys, because I just got Invisalign and I feel like my tongue is like stuck. My words are not coming out the way I want to. Hopefully I'll no, get- Oh, you're doing great, girl. Thank you. Look, I just, I and I have a whole bunch of brackets too. So I feel like they keep rubbing on my cheeks. Uh, she said, I, I called this morning. I'm like, I'm really struggling with this Invisalign thing. She said, don't worry. In a few days, we won't even notice anymore. I'm like, great. I have to talk today for a while on a Zoom. <laughs> and uh, I'm struggling. So thank you. All right. So are you still living in the home? Um, where are you moving? Where are you going? So we want to know about, we want to create some conversation with them. You know, wh where are you going? When are you moving? When do you need to be there? And then I move on to tell them, you know what? Homes are selling very quickly. I'm always in the East Valley. So that's why it says East Valley on there. Uh, if for some reason you can't sell it, hang on, let me just move this really quick here. So if, let's move this down. Okay. So if for some reason you can't sell it or you can't get the price that you want, how long do you think you're going to try to sell it on your own before you look at other options, right? So again, guys, I'm not trying to sell this house over the phone, trying to list it. Like it just doesn't work, but that's 99% of the training that I see in FISBOs. And I think that's why most people hate FISBOs because they do it the wrong way. So we're just trying to find out what are your plans? Where are you going? When do you need to be there? They will tell you, oh, they always, they love, people love to talk about themselves. You just have to listen. Just listen, pay attention, take notes so you know exactly what the plans are. Oh, my, you know, mom is sick. She's in Florida. I got to move. I got to be there by this day. So now you know how to follow up as well because you know it when they're, you know, starting to get anxious, like, man, I, I got to get moving. I'm not getting enough showings. And, and so if you decide to list the home on the MLS, do you have an agent that you feel obligated to work with? Because I also don't want to waste my time with somebody who says, oh, yeah, my sister is a realtor here in Arizona. And that happens, believe it or not. There are people that have like a sibling or a parent or a daughter who's a realtor and they're still trying to sell it on their own. Like it, it's crazy, but it happens. So because you want to know if you do okay, good luck. You, I crossed that one off my list. Like if you're going to list with your sister, when the time comes, I'm not wasting my time. But I asked them because I want to know if they don't have anybody, would they be willing to interview me? So if they say yes, then I'm going to go through the whole process and the flow chart that I showed you guys. So then I try to schedule an appointment. Oh, okay. Well, I would love to see your house. When would be a good time for me to stop by? And I always give them two options. That's like sales 101, you know, hey, when would be a good time for me to stop by? I'm available tomorrow between nine to 11, or I can do, you know, Thursday between three and four. Does that work for you? And you can ask them, you know, is it better in the afternoons or evenings? However, you feel more comfortable, but the idea is that you're giving them a couple of options. Make the appointment. Hey, I look forward to previewing the home with you. And I always ask them for the email address because I want to send them my resume. And I'm going to show you guys what I send to them as well. My resume, I already changed it. So it's uh, all Bliss Realty uh, on my, my resume. So that's all changed. Now I need to change the letters that I send to them in the mail. And if they don't pick up, because people always ask me that too, what if they don't pick up voicemail? Now, the voicemail is quick. It's just, hey, this is Trisha. I'm a local realtor. I was just checking in to see if the house on Sparrow Drive is still available. If you can give me a call back and you leave your number, that's it. So on the voicemail, that's all you're going to do. Nothing else. Here's another script. It's always the same, you guys, you know, I've typed this so many times and then you get so used to it that you don't even need a script anymore. You kind of just know what you're going to say. But as you can see, it's the same thing. Hey, this is Trisha. I'm a local, I'm, I'm a local realtor. How are you? Um, I saw your house go up for sale. I know you're selling it on your own. I was just curious if you are open to working with a buyer's agent, if I bring you a fully qualified buyer. They say yes, no. Most people say yes, okay? They want to sell the house. It's rare that I run into one that goes, no, 
I hate realtors. It's very rare. Most people say, yeah. I mean, they're trying to sell. <laughs> they're like, yeah, if you bring me a buyer, I'm going to be happy to pay you a, a commission. And at this point, I'm not negotiating if it's 2 3%. I'm just like, okay, great. And have you already moved or are you still living in the home? Oh, I'm still living in the home. Got it. Where are you off to when the home sells? Where are you going? Oh, I'm going to Nevada. Very cool. And with the market being so good right now, and it doesn't matter if the market is good or bad. I always say the same thing, okay? So that's great. With the market being so good right now, I'm sure you have no issues selling the house, the house on your own. But if for some reason you can't, you're not going to look, when are you going to look at some other options? Okay, same thing again. When are you going to look? Because we want to know, is it going to be in a few weeks? Is it going to be in a month? And they will tell you, makes sense. Well, I would like to I would like to maybe stop by one day this week. You move on to the same thing, guys. Is it better evenings, afternoons, or you know, I'm available tomorrow? And just make sure that it is within 24 to 48 hours from the time of the call. Okay, let's put it on the calendar for tomorrow at 3 p.m. If you need to change that, you know, just let me know. Fair enough. They're like, yeah, perfect. I'll send you a quick email with my resume. What's the best email? And you just write down the email. Perfect. I'll send you the email and plan on seeing you tomorrow. So that is very simple, right? Uh, people ask me about dialers all the time. What are my favorite dialers? Vulcan 7, Mojo, and Red X. I've used all three of them. Uh, they are good for different reasons. Uh, Vulcan 7 is my favorite, but it's also the most expensive one. Um, so, you know, none of them, I'm going to say that's perfect. And that's my truly favorite because Vulcan seven is my favorite, but it's not because of the price. Okay. So it's the most expensive. Now you don't need to have a dialer. You can just come to Zillow and you can put whatever neighborhood you want on here. Chandler, Gilbert, you know, West Valley, whatever neighborhood you want, you can choose price range. And you can just choose by owner, okay? So instead of by agents, you click by owner and you can say owner posted and you remove agent listed. You don't want to see new constructions. So that way it'll show you every day, you can see the new homes that are coming into the market for that area that you are in. And they always have the phone number on there because obviously they want people to call. So that's you know something that, I highly recommend, especially right now, because there's not a ton of for sale by owners. I mean, I've been calling for so many years and I've had markets where I needed a dialer badly because I could call a hundred people in one day. I mean, it was flooded with FISBOs. Now you get a few. Uh, some days nobody lists a new FISBO, uh, but you know, if it gets to be a lot, then you could use a dialer. Those are my three favorite ones, like I said. But right now, I don't recommend spending money on a dialer. I would just use Zillow and just call and go from there. Uh, I'm going to show you guys really quick here, you know, the resume that I send to Fizbo's. And so this is it. So I give them my resume how many years of experience, you know, you can just look at your past numbers, commitments. I think this is super important. You know, I will always return your phone calls, emails, text messages with urgency. I will always give you the truth regardless of the situation. I will always provide you with expert advice and counseling so that you're able to make the best decision for yourself and your family. I will fight to ensure you get the most for your home. So sending this up front really builds a relationship before you even get there, which is awesome, okay? So you just want to make sure they kind of know how professional you are, you know what you're doing, because most people arrive at these FISBOs trying to list a home, and they have basically a listing presentation. That's something that you can use later if needed, if they invite you as one of the agents that they are interviewing, but to be very honest with you guys, that's a very, when you do it this way, you will not do a lot of the listing presentations. They usually reach out to you and they go, I want to work with you. 
Like that's it. They just, they already chose you because the law of reciprocity kicks in and you gave so much value that they're like, I owe it to her. Like that's the one I like. I want to go with her. So I give them a marketing plan of action as well. You know, I let them know. And I'm still working on this presentation because I'm modifying everything uh, to make it all bliss realty. So I may have some West USA and some typos on it, but um, cause I'm obviously no longer using my, my old one. I'm updating everything. So, um, which is really crazy that I moved to a new brokerage at this point in my career, but I really loved Mara when I talked to her the first time I was like, okay, it's going to be a lot of work making a move, but it'll be worth it. And I, I'm really happy I made the move. So there's a lot of things I'm having to update and, you know, get used to it's all new. And I was, you know, with my uh, old one for so long. But you want to give them, you know, what you're going to do for them. And guys, this is, you know, everybody's going to do the same thing. It's not that I'm like special and I'm doing something crazy. It's just to look professional. But look, complete the pre-listing home fe uh, feature sheet. Everybody's going to do that. You know, that's just what we do. Lock box for sale by the side. I mean, it's just, it's nothing is special. It's just what we all do but it just looks good. You know, they're like, she has it in writing. So she's serious about it. So that's something else I do there. Um, and then I talk to them about no risk listing program. So you can cancel anytime. I'm not going to keep you in handcuffs. Um, you know, if you're not, I, I talk to them and I say, listen, if I ever get to the point where I list your home, cause I ask them when I get there, you know, when I build commonality, I ask them, I say, Hey, uh, did you get my my resume? Yes, I did. Uh, you know, I hope you saw that, you know, if you ever list the home with me, I'm not one of those agents that you're stuck with me for whatever amount of time you signed on that listing agreement. I really believe that I have to earn your business on a daily basis. So if any day at the end of the day, you feel like I did not meet your expectations, I'm not the agent you're looking to work with, that's fine. We can cancel the contract at any time. And I also tell them that we have some flexibility here because you are a FISBO. So you're trying to sell it on your own to save some money. So we have a flexible commission program. And I probably should have ran this by Mara before I did it. I just thought about that right now. But that's how I do it. Okay. With FISBOs, I say, hey, flexible commission program. If you find the buyer, I will handle the transaction for you for 1%. Like you, I will just do the paperwork for you. Three and a half percent. If I'm a dual agent and I bring the buyer in and 5% if another agent brings in the buyer and then I'm going to share with that agent two and a half and two and a half. So that these are just, you know, my latest numbers, you guys, you know, you can do whatever you want. Um, I think Mara is pretty flexible as far as, you know, you negotiating commissions with people. Um, I don't like to go below 5%. Um, you know, two and a half, two and a half. The only time that I go below that is like right now I'm listing a house for somebody who has literally purchased seven houses from me. And the lowest price that she purchased was 750,000. And I made between two to 3% on all of those homes. So she's listing with me now. I'm probably going to go a little bit lower than 5%, but normally that's my, my minimum is 5%, you know, if it's a regular FISBO. Um, anyway, so this is very attractive for them as well. I know they're not going to sell the house. So I know that 1% is just there just for show, just to make them feel better, but I know they're not going to sell it. And I know that the chances that I'm going to bring in a buyer is very slim to none. I don't even remember the last time I had a dual agency going on. I mean, and I'm not even talking about me representing buyer and seller. I think that has happened one time in my entire career of 20 plus years. Uh, the last time that I did dual agency, meaning the other agent was in the same brokerage, was many, many years ago. So even that is already rare. So I know at the end of the day, it's going to be the 5%, but having that on here just makes them love you and want to list with you. So then I go over the listing process with them. You know, hey, I'm going to install the lockbox, complete the listing paperwork. Again, guys, nothing special. It's just what you already do anyway. I'm just putting it on paper so that they feel like, hey, I like this girl. She's really professional. Um, you know, look, there's nothing special here. 
I update them every Friday. So once a week, I will give you an update. I'll let you know, uh, you know, if we have any showings scheduled, I will give you any updates, anything going on on the market. So every Friday I give them a call um, and everybody should be doing that anyway. Review the final numbers before closing, final walkthrough. I mean, really, there's nothing special. OK, it's just all the stuff that you already do. I just put it in writing. So it's not like I'm doing more than anybody else. And then I just copy and paste some reviews from Zillow. Uh, like I said, thankfully, I only have five star reviews on Zillow. So I have some of those on here so they know, OK, well, she's pretty good. Uh, people are raving about her. So that's a good thing. It's going to be, you know, good service. And I have, as you can see, I have a, a couple of um different pages with that. So that's it. I have, yeah, I have two pages here. Oh, and then I have references and that's it. So I give them some references, you know, some names and phone numbers of people that have worked with me in the past or other agents that I've worked with in the past. And then I just say a thank you note, you know, thank you for taking the time to consider working with me and and that's it, you guys. I don't know. This was awesome. Questions. Thank you. That's been my system. You know, it's yeah. not super professional as far as like yeah. presentation because I just shared with you guys, you know, the sheets that I have. Um, if you ever have any questions about FISBOs, you know, give me a call. Um, okay. But it has worked in a fantastic way for me to build my my referrals, you know, and yeah. it's amazing the amount of buyers that you pick up when you're working with FISBOs because you end up doing open houses for them. That's yeah. a house that no other agent would be able to sit to open. So now you pick up that and you become, you become the experts. And then you tell people, oh, I'm an expert when it becomes, you know, to for sale by owners. And, and yeah. So if you guys are afraid to call, don't be, it's super fun calling and it's amazing how little competition you have. And I think that's the best part of this is that there's no competition. Everything else you do, yeah. you feel overwhelmed with the competition. People are so terrified of calling that you become like one in a million. Well, and I wanted the commission. We, we, this is, this is one of the, re this is the main reason for the lawsuit, right? And at Bliss, we don't have a set commission. It is based on you and your business. So whatever and i say get the listing right as long as you pay your broker fees that's and that's out of your commission i would hate to see you guys work for free so i love <laughs> that that layout right um because again there is no set number and at the end of the day it's relationship so you do a good job for that client and that client will end up referring you hopefully more business or like you said you get more clients from and that's what everyone should want is you get more, more listings or more buyers from that listing and you're marketing it correctly too. So, so yeah, this is awesome. Thanks for bringing that up, you know, because especially for new agents, hi, Denise, Denise and I are working together. We've done a zoom and, and spent some time, but uh, one thing I'll say, especially for new agents like Denise, you know, and we, we talked a little bit about that. I mean, nowadays, you know, you have 3K listings, you have all these discount brokerages. Mm -hmm. If I was starting today with no experience, I would take a listing for a discounted price, even just Heck for yeah. the experience, right? Heck yeah, yeah. yeah. That's what I told you. Yeah. I'm like, you know, if you have to get 1% on a yeah. $400,000 listing, take it. You, it's practice, right? It's, yeah. You're beginning to build that, that database. You're beginning to build yeah. relationships, I will always, I, I have a minimum that I'm like, oh, now it's just not worth my time. Right. But I, you know, like I'm going to give a discount to my friend who's bought so many houses from me. I'm trying to figure it out if I should do um, four and a half or 4%, yeah. but it's yeah. going to be somewhere in, in price range. But if I were brand new, you guys, I would literally be taking listings for like three and a half percent. I would pay two and a half and keep one. That way yep. I can practice you know, I can learn and I can make some extra money. Most people that are starting brand new, they either have a full-time job already, so they don't need desperately the commission or they're married and, you know, they're stay-at-home moms. So any money that comes in is extra money anyway. So I'm glad that you said that because I have yeah. worked, you know, brokerages where they're like, well, the minimum that you're allowed is 5% or yeah. you know, whatever no. it may be. Like, yeah. 
No, you do even, and I'm just like you, that's why we connected was if I have someone that's going to buy from me and I'm going to get, I'm obviously that commission's changing. I would do like a thousand bucks for the listing side, you know, cause that's what impacts them. So, um, you know, it, as long as you have your business plans and the biggest thing is that you're communicating it out there and you have it laid out properly so they can see what they're going to get. You, you can go through, okay, you want to pay this commission. This is what I'm going to do for you. Just like any listing agent. Um, and just like buyer presentations. So, I mean, you're always, you can't, you, you got to just focus on doing you and talking to those people that come to you. You can't worry about what other brokerages are doing or other agents. Cause you're, you know, we have the I buyers, you have the flat rate. That's always going to be there always. So you're going to attract the people that do see the value in you and do want to work with you. And that's, that's where you have to keep your head at. So, you know, um, just you, focusing you on that. Somebody, you know, like a FISBO that is also buying a house guys. Cause that happens too. Not only you get to sit on open house, you can pick up a couple of buyers, but they may be buying a new house and then they end up buying it with you. Cause you brought them a buyer, you know? And, you know, like Mara said, then you can give them a huge discount because you're like, well, now they're buying on this side. I set an open yeah. house at their house. I picked up a couple of extra buyers because of it. And you begin to get a lot of action, you know, in your business when you do that. And for me personally, since I started in the industry, I have been very different than the training that 99.9% .9 of people do. Um, for me, it's always just been relationships, like 100%. Yeah. When people come through my open houses, like I was with a brokerage one time for a very short amount of time, a long time ago, not going to mention the name, but they used to do these mega open houses and they would bring TVs and tables and tablecloths and chairs. And they would just get nuts with these open houses. They had like a hundred signs placed everywhere and they were so systematically they had this sheet and the clipboard for people to sign up and you know I worked with them for a short amount of time and I'm thinking that's just not my style you know when people come in they're like when they come in they come in this way you give the sheet you say this you say, I'm like that is so robotic and horrible and you know you you ask this question you say that you show this room and I'm thinking no I have I cannot do business this way for me people come in my intention is like how do I make a new friend? How do I schedule yeah. a coffee appointment with this person, right? For me, it's always been that. So it's always been like, like one of my closest friends today, uh, Bernadine Miu, I met her at an open house many, many years ago. And she came in and we started talking. She had three boys and I was like, oh, where did they go to school? And we, we connected and she's like, I'm a nurse. I work in a dermatology office. I'm like, oh my gosh, my husband's a dermatologist. Where do you work? let's schedule a coffee. I love you. I'm like, we can be friends. And so we had coffee together. She has bought three houses for me throughout the years, sold two. And we're still really close friends. Like we're, we have lunch together like once every couple months or so. So my approach with real estate has always been that I'm like the least professional person when it comes to like, you know, the guy in a suit and a briefcase, yeah. you know, everything is like, here's my business card. I rarely even pass business cards because when people come to my open houses, what I'm telling them, I'm like, oh, hey, how are you? Oh, how many kids do you have? Where are you moving to? How, about, right. you know, how long have you connecting. been connecting? Connecting, like, let's be friends. Yeah. And because I connect so much at the, instead of, oh, here's my clipboard for you to sign up. And it's asking all these questions. I just, I have my phone in my hand and I go, oh my gosh, this is so, I'm so glad I met you. We need to grab a cup of coffee. And I do have a couple of houses in mind that I want to send to you. What is the best number that I can text you those two houses that I have in mind? I don't have them in mind yet, but I will. As soon as they leave, I'm going to pull <laughs> up some houses that will be in mind, right? So then yeah. I just, then I have the phone number and then I go, okay, well, let me get your email too. That way, if I have to email you any links, I can do it through email. Now I have their number their email and I put notes on it, you know, came to this open house and I just have it on my iPhone. So now I sit down on my computer. I go, I know exactly what they're looking for. I pull up a couple of houses I send to them. And then I ask her, I'm like, Hey, I'd love to learn more about what you're looking for. Are you open to grabbing a cup of coffee at Starbucks? Let me buy you a cup of coffee. And that has been my entire approach since I started. I have never, ever done anything 
the professional, serious way, you know, not my FISBOs, not my open houses. And truly, my whole business was built through FISBOs, which led me to open houses. And that led to repeat business and referrals. That's good. Thanks, Trisha. Do you guys have any other questions? Um, I have a question. <laughs> just trying to find out, I know you had your resume. Did you like actually email that first or how did you get the resume over? Was it prior to the actual appointment? Yes. So when I have them on the phone, like the very last question, when I have the appointment, you know, I'll say, hey, can I stop by either tomorrow between this time and this time or Friday or what works best, you know, afternoons or evenings or, or mornings, whatever. You know, once I ask that question, I have an appointment set. They go, yeah, tomorrow at 3 p.m. works. I'm like, great. What would be the best email that I can send you my resume so you can see who it is that you're meeting with and you know it's a safe meeting, right? Because there is that too, as I'm talking to them, now that I'm very comfortable talking to Fizbos, that's one thing I tell them. I say, you know, um, now that you listed your house for sale on your own, just make sure that you are safe. You know, don't believe that everybody who's calling you and scheduling appointments are Fiz are uh, realtors. Uh, so make sure that you always ask for a resume before they come in so you can look them up online and everything. So I'd love to send you my resume. What's the best email? And then so before I get there for the one on one appointment, they already have my resume right in front of them. And they feel very grateful that I'm telling them to be safe. You know, don't allow anybody to just come and see your house. If it's a realtor, always make sure that you have a resume ahead of time. So, you know, it's a professional realtor. And if you have just random buyers coming through, you know, make sure that you wait in the driveway, you know, make sure you're comfortable with the situation before they come in, make sure you're not alone at home. Like I give them lots of tips like that as we're building a relationship. So before I go, I, I send that over. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Well, thanks, Trisha. I'll get this uploaded to everyone later this week and sweet assist. And um, no, I really appreciate it. It was great info. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thanks, thanks, for inviting. thanks guys. Bye. Bye.